Okay, in this example, we're going to create an import file using data that we have in Excel. And we're going to do this by creating an entry grid, putting some data into the entry grid, and then importing it into General Ledger. Now I'm going to note that um, I'm going to start on, on Sheet 1, Cell A1, although in reality I could, I could put the data anywhere in the worksheet or in the workbook, and I could even organize the columns however I want. Because unlike other solutions where you might have had to save the worksheet as a CSV file in a particular format, this isn't, this isn't going to be like that. This is going to take a different approach. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start with um, going to the Add-ins tab where I'll find the Office Connector Import Toolbar right here. And I'll click on the Import Wizard. And then I see here a list of the different types of imports that are supported by Sage 300 Construction and Real Estate. And one of those being uh, General Ledger Transactions. That's the example I'm going to use in this case. I'll click Next. I'm going to pick the columns that I want to enter data for it doesn't have to be all the columns, it's just the ones that I plan to populate. So for example, I'm not going to worry about reference to or accrual or cache since my data folder defaults to accrual. Okay, then I'm going to select this top option, create an entry grid for the selected columns. That way I don't have to worry about doing any other design work. I just click on that, click finish, and now I have an entry grid. This little message here is just reminding me of the fact that column H has a special function in it called TS Import. And that's the magical function that does all the work for me. So that's what allows me to organize and rearrange things however I want, even format data however I want. So for example, columns F and G, uh, I can format those with commas. Uh, I could even take and, and rearrange columns so that the order of the columns does not have to be in the same order that they would appear in the import file. Okay, so now I have an entry grid. That's all there was to it. Uh, I can take this now and save it. And now I'm ready to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and enter some, some values here so we can test this out. Now do keep in mind, until you've applied formatting, you might need to um, uh, keep in mind that if I typed certain values, Excel might try to interpret them as dates. That's why you'd probably want to format certain values as text and things like that. Okay, now notice that um, my entry grid only appears to have one row. But as I tab across here, and I tab past the last column, uh, a new row gets added automatically. And that special TS import function gets copied down to the next row. Okay, and then I get yet another row. Okay, and that's it. So there's my data that I want to import. Uh, and again, notice that my values have commas. That's typically a no-no when you're trying to import data. Uh, but that's okay, because what's going to happen is Office Connector Import will grab the values off the worksheet. It knows where those values go in the import file. It also knows what format they need to be in. So it's going to take these values reformat them and put them in the correct format when it creates the import file for me. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll click on the Add-ins tab again and I'll click this option right here that says Save Import File. And it gives me a default uh, path or location for that file. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put it on my desktop I think. Okay, so the file's named gltransaction.txt, 
And th then notice I have a few different options. I can tell it to automatically launch the import entries window in General Ledger, uh, or I could run a Sage macro, and where the macro might have a step built into it to import that particular file, or I could just do nothing. I could just let it create the file, and then I can go and import it later. I'm going to choose the first option. Okay, and this is just a reminder that when that import window comes up from General Ledger here in just a second, um, I need to make sure I go and select that particular path and, and file name that I just used. Okay, I'll select my data folder for General Ledger. Okay, and there's my import transactions window, uh, straight out of General Ledger. Uh, now I can go select the file that I created. Again, I put that on my desktop right here. And I'm going to send the output to a print file. Okay, and now my data is being imported. Let's go take a look at those entries in General Ledger just to make sure that we're, we're seeing what we expect. I'm going to first go examine that print file. Okay, so here it says that uh, we Im imported three transactions. The total debits were 2,000, the total credits were 2,000. So everything looks good. And I could go into inquiry, inquiry by batch. They have not been posted yet, so I'll look in the new file. There they are, import transactions. If I double click on that batch, there's my transactions. So that's all there is to it. Within a matter of just a few minutes, I created an import uh, an entry grid in Excel uh, that can contain however many rows I want. Uh, the formatting can be however I want the formatting to be and with the columns in whatever order I want. And uh, I did that with just within just a few minutes. And then I entered some data and directly imported that into General Ledger. So there we go. Thank you.